and welcome. Um, my name's Steve, Steve Beckles of Boussier, the speaker without the orange tie. And guys, welcome to the orange room. Uh, those that don't know anything about me, I'm a motivational speaker. I go to schools, colleges and universities around the UK, Europe and in the States. I talk about belief systems. Why? Because I think beliefs determine what we do in life and how we are in life. Now, I'm not wearing an orange tie. Now, I haven't lost it, but I make a decision. I made a decision that by habit, I would naturally just put on my tie. And I think it was a, a Swedish philosopher once said, Nieden Kilgagar once said that um, when you label me, you negate me. And, and I think I've been labeled to always have the orange tie and I'll probably wear it next week. But I also read that habits rule the unreflecting herd. And I thought, just before I was gonna put this on actually, I thought, I'm not going to, to break a habit. Those that don't know about habits, 90% of what we do is subconscious. 10% is conscious. And just before I decided to run this video, my 10% kicked in and it said to me, Steve, don't put it on. Now, habitually, the habits, the voice in my head said, Steve, put the tie on. You are the speaker with the orange tie. How would you look without the tie? That's not right. You need to put the, and those voices were in my head trying to persuade me to go back to my habits and decided to challenge it. So I've taken it off today. However, yes, I'll probably have it on next week, but the point I'm making is that a lot of what I talk about, you've got to overcome, just like I'd have with this tie, decided not to wear it. But those voices are often maybe to do with food, maybe to do with career change, maybe to do with maybe relationship change, where that subconscious says to you, just stay where you are because that's what you normally do. So changing habits is very important. Don't worry, the time might be on, well, probably on next week, but very important to change habits. Now, let's move on. Um, I've done a series of these and I love them. I have a passion of doing it. And the whole idea is just to really help people to help themselves. And with these tips and techniques, hopefully they can be useful. Now, if you saw my strap line in the video, it said as follows. Uh, many of us are parked on the highway of life, not wanting to move. But you have the choice when to choose when to move. Now, let me explain. Um, my car, <laughs> hey, can you believe this? Check this out. I actually ordered this at the beginning of the week on Amazon Prime, got it, it was white, and I went out and I painted this car. And those that don't know, I have a car called Lucy, uh, which is an orange car, and it's exactly the same as this. Now, a lot of people will say, Steve, you need to get out and get a life, but no. I wanted to make this talk really relevant. So here is Lucy and I'm gonna take this around in my talks as well. However, joking aside, this car represents, I believe, many of us in life. And what we do, we park, all right? And we just let life go by. And we might have an opportunity to maybe start that new uh, idea for um, a business but you let it go by. You have the opportunity to maybe start that new job. You just need to go for it and maybe make a difference. You let it go by. And what happens when this car's parked? You don't turn the hazard lights on. You don't, you don't tell anyone. Yeah, you don't call the RAC. You keep your car parked and you let your life go by. I think many of us are doing this. Now, my talk, um, I'm a big Les Brown fan. I don't know if you heard me yes, uh, last week talk about it, but. A lot of what I'm going to talk about, I've just been taking some strands from what he's been talking about when it comes to parking. And that is a quote by Maya Angelou, where she said that many of us are going through life parking our cars on the highway of life, not wanting to move. Now, I've taken the words you, if, if you remember I said, but you have the choice. And I'm going to use Y-O-U as my acronym to help you, to help yourself, to maybe move yourself. Now, using a lot of the quotes I've said from Les Brown, it's been amazing. And Les Brown said this, he said, most people fail in life, not because they aim too high and miss, but they aim too low and hit. And many of us are not aiming at all. And when you think about that, I think it's true, isn't it? I think we're very satisfied at where we are. In other words, we, we park our car. 
And it's not until maybe something happens to you where maybe you lose your job or maybe the relationship ends that when you come out of it, statistically it's been proven, you actually feel better now you're out of it. And you think, why didn't I do that all the time? Les Brown tells a story of uh, when he walks past a man's house, he hears a dog uh, wailing away and barking in pain. He turned around and the owner was sitting next to the dog. And he turns to the owner and he said, why is the dog wailing in so much pain? The owner turned to Les Brown and said, well, because he's sitting on a nail. Les Brown looked at the owner and said, well, why doesn't he get up? And the owner said, because it's not hurting enough. And Les Brown made the point that many of us will whine and complain and do nothing and still sit on that nail. And I think going back to this analogy again, I think it's time, maybe this is the time, to pull out and get back into that highway of life. So, like I said earlier, what I'm going to try to do is go through Y-O-U, which is you, and give you some tips and techniques to hopefully, maybe just shift your mindset very slightly. So, you, what does it stand for? It stands for why, yeah? And why is for yes, I can. Now, your brain is a very simplistic thing, even though it's quite complex. When you say something to yourself enough times, your brain picks that up and it treats it as an instruction. So it falls into that subconscious mind. If you can go around saying, yes, I can, what happens eventually? Your brain starts to think, well, can I? But one of the reasons you don't do it is because of doubts. OK, we all have doubts. So that's often why you say, yeah, I can do it. There's doubts. I'm going to go through those five doubts with you and hopefully help you to overcome them. So the first doubt is overthinking. A lot of us are overthinking. Where's that Nike uh, uh, strap line come from? Just do it. But we don't. We overthink. I think you might have heard me said before, but it was Winston Churchill said that uh, procrastination and perfectionism are exactly the same. And he explained that uh, a procrastinator won't do anything, can't be asked. A perfectionist will try to get it perfect. And consequently, he'll be just like the procrastinator because nothing will happen. So guys, that's the first thing you've got to please bear, bear in mind is that overthinking often causes you to drift. The next thing is worrying. That's another thing which is a doubt, isn't it? A lot of us worry. Guys, <clears throat> worrying is a natural emotion. We all sense fear. We all have worry. But you've got to understand that worry doesn't actually cure anything. I read somewhere, worry is like a rocking chair. It keeps you busy, but it doesn't get you anywhere. So come out of that worrying mi mindset. Very important. The next one is trying to make everyone happy. This I think we're all suffering from to a certain extent, especially when it comes to family, isn't it? You just don't want to rock the boat. That's where it comes from. But in life, you've got to look for yourself, not being selfish, but you have to look for yourself. What do they say if a plane is ever going to crash? They say the first thing to do is don't put your mouthpiece over your child. You put it over yourself first. You must put yourself first. So if you're in a situation where it's not working, you are uncomfortable, you have to put aside doubt and make that choice and you've got to move it's very important the next one guys is living in the past many of us live in the past in other words this time is a now time so if i look at the clock very quickly it's 10 past four this now time is the only time i can control however when i'm coaching working with some people whenever i ask them how they are they make a reference to the past so they'll say to me oh it's terrible steve you know struggling at the moment things are and what happens they negate their now time so in other words their now time that they can do something about doesn't exist i know some people that don't live in the now they live in the past i'm sure you know some people like that also trying to predetermine the future guys we're in a really challenging time at the moment but for you to say i'll never get things changed in my life i'll always have this bad job because of this coronavirus guys you are going to be stuck in that future which hasn't yet happened the now is all you can control. So once you understand that, doubt hopefully goes out the window because you say to yourself, well, this is all I can control. This is what I can deal with. And the last one is number five, is confidence. Now, I believe confidence can be developed. I think what comes with confidence before confidence is competence. Think about it. Competence comes before confidence. Think about anything you're not sure about. It's because you're not confident in doing it. Learn the competence in doing it. It then becomes a confident situation when I first started doing these posts I wasn't confident I gave it a try 
But when I did it over and over again, what happens? I built up my competence and all of a sudden I became confident. So guys, a quick recap on those five things in order for you to get that, that you kind of factor. Stop overthinking. Just do it. What's that saying? The best thing to do is the right thing. The next thing to do is the wrong thing. But the worst thing to do is nothing. Next thing, guys, is worrying. It's a natural emotion. But once you've worried for maybe four or five minutes, think, right, come on, let's get something done. The next thing, guys, is try to please everyone. You can't please everyone. I think I've said this already. You know, I deliver what I deliver. Speak of the orange tie. I know there are some people that don't like these. Quite sad. Anyway, they don't. That's just life. But guys, you can't please everyone. Next one is very important, guys, is living in the past. Let's live in the now. This time is all you can control. Say to yourself, right, I'm going to get this do it done now because this is your time. I read somewhere the past and the future are just illusions. They don't exist. Just now does. OK. And the last one, guys, is confidence. How do you gain confidence, guys? Think about something you're not sure about and just do it. I'll mention Ken Brown, uh, Ken Barnes, I'm sure you won't mind me saying. He said he was procrastinating for a long time before he did his videos. Now he's done his, he's got his third interview with Janet Harris this Monday. Because he just built up that confidence. OK, so there's your why. Also, guys, when I talk about yes, I can, I want you to start thinking about words and language. A lady called uh, Dr. Carol Dweck. 10 years ago, she's known as uh, the Yet Lady, let me explain. She was asked to go to Chicago uh, a College where all the grades were very low. In fact, a lot of people were failing. On the certificate, when they didn't succeed, they had the words fail. And when they went to resit, the resit rate, in other words, the pass rate was only 17%. Carol Dweck was asked to come in to try to improve these grades. When she spoke to the head teacher, she said, this is easy. You just need to do one thing. The head teacher said, what's that? She said, you just need to change fail to not yet. The head teacher laughed. She said, don't be so ridiculous. How can words make a difference to whether they have an improvement in their retake rate? This is what happened. When the students didn't get the grade they uh, wanted to achieve, they had the certificate which said not yet on it. The retake rate before was 17%. In this case, after the not yet certificates, 37% pass rate. It jumped up by 20%. Why is that? When you say you can't and when you fail, the door of possibility closes. Why? Because your brain hears you say, I can't do this, yay. And it goes off and does something else. If you say you can't do it yet, the door stays slightly open and your mind and your brain knows that. So your brain can't shut it down because you've said you can't do it yet. Can you see how powerful words are? So if you can't do something, say, I, I can't do it, I can't do it yet. Or you say to yourself, yes, I can, and then just go for it. Do you see what I mean? This is trying to get you out of that lane. When someone asks you to do something, oh yeah, I'll, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. What you're saying, you're using language to instruct your behavior. OK, so that was why. All right. And it's very important to look at that whole why thing and saying yes and you can do it. Next thing, guys, is O for the U is organize your now because that's all you've got. Now, I think I explained earlier. Uh, now is all you can organize. I can get up now and start tidying my kitchen because I can use that moment now. I can say I'm going to do it later on, but it doesn't mean anything. I read somewhere, um, a decision is not an action, it's just a thought. True story, a guy called George Orison in 2008 created a company called Taxi Magic. It was a great company. What you could do with Taxi Magic had an app, you could call a cab, yeah? You could see when the cab's coming and you don't pay the driver anything. Brilliant. However, he had some teething problems. The cabs wouldn't always turn up on time and sometimes the finances were lost. So he was losing profit. He said he was going to do something about it, but he didn't. He made the decision to do something about it, but he didn't. In 2009, a guy called Travis Kalinak took the same idea. You know the company. It's Uber. Guys, it's about taking action. What I'm going to say to you now is organize your now. Don't do it late. Do it now. And what happens? You build up a momentum. Yeah. Take that action now. 
organize your now because that's all you've got. Make your decision, whatever you're gonna do, do it. Now, if you feel and you can't do it straight away, guys, you've seen me talk about this already, just write it down. What was it? Einstein says that geniuses think on paper. Write it down, all right? The last one, guys, is you. Undertake small tasks so they become bigger tasks. Let me say that again. Undertake small tasks so they become bigger tasks. Let me explain what I mean. Habitually, I'm not wearing my tie. Those that have kind of just joined me now thinking I've lost it. I haven't lost it. It's here. But I didn't put it on because I wanted to break a habit. All right. And now I've proven to myself I can do it. As I said previously, all those voices in my head saying, Steve, you need to wear the tie. How can you sit there without the tie? You're the speaker of the orange tie. What are you going to say you are? The speaker without the tie? I pushed that aside. That's my subconscious. And I decided to do something different. Now, undertaking small tasks, look in your front room, your bedroom, whatever room you've got, and move something. And that sounds really weird. But what I'm saying, move something. In other words, if the chairs were normally along the settee side because of the window, move them. So move them to the other side. Uh, the plant pot that was normally behind you, don't put it, move it, put it by the radiator. Now you might be thinking, Steve, that is insane, why? Why is because you have to do like I've done. I've started to challenge my subconscious behavior, which says to me to put on the tie, because that's what I always do, for me to take conscience and say, no, no, I'm not doing it. I'm going without the tie, do you see? So it's the same analogy. Look around your flat, your house. What could you move? Now, this might sound so simplistic. You might be thinking, Steve, this is ridiculous. This is not gonna make any difference. I think it will. Just you doing something that I've said after this, already is challenging your subconscious behavior because subconsciously you would finish maybe watching this and you'll go maybe do a bit of shopping or go and see your friend whatever but what you're going to do hopefully you're going to break the habit and that's what all of this is all about yeah when you're struggling to do anything it's habits it's habits that stop you from doing something different and that's why if you notice that things run in cycles, when things are running away, and all of a sudden there's a change, something's done slightly differently. This is really important. And I talk a lot about growth mindset in my workshops, et cetera, et cetera, but it's just something for you to think about. Now, boom, I'm there, I've done it. Now, let's have a quick recap, which is very important. I spoke about um, Maya Angelou, who talks about the quote when it comes to, many of us are part in the highway of life, not wanting to move. And that's why I'm talking about this today. So let's take the why. Yes, I can. If you don't want to say that, say, I haven't done it yet. Now remember Carol Dweck. Please Google this lady, Dr. Carol Dweck, D-W-E-C-K. She is an amazing lady, done a lot of work throughout the States and does a lot of work in within schools as well about that power of yet, okay? The next one is O, is start to organize your time now organize it in other words just start taking action which you perhaps wouldn't have normally done it's about realizing that as i stated earlier now is all you've got and time's running really fast and i think we need to do something about it. it's really important and finally is you is undertake some small tasks i challenge you after this when it's finished and you've turned it off and hopefully enjoyed it I want you to go and do something you wouldn't normally do. Move the setting, move the chair. What happens, and I believe you'll start to build up a momentum of just doing things differently until people start saying, hold on, why are you going for a run? You're going, well, why not? Do you see what I mean? Why move the settee? Why not move the settee? Oh, well, it's underneath the window. Well, change it. Yeah, the only thing constant is in life is change. So guys, that was you. I really hope you have enjoyed that. Guys, there's a lot going on. And I've got some questions that have been going through my mind, a number of people as well. Um, now, I'm a salsa man. I love my salsa. And as you know, I do my DJing on a, a Sunday um, with uh, Salsa Cesaro, uh, it's O-S-S-R, and it's been amazing. However, there's now gonna be a chat show. Uh, it's probably gonna be an hour. Yeah, they're gonna be playing music afterwards, we'll see how it goes. But there's some important questions that I want, especially for the salsa people out there. We've now heard that this is gonna go on for another six months. And I, I'm just interested to know how you salsa people out there are feeling, even non-salsa people, how are you feeling about that? 
With the panel we've got, we've got some amazing salsa people, people involved in events, etc. And I think it might be an idea just to maybe connect and ring in and find out about what they feel about it and what you feel about it. I mean, how would you feel about taking a vaccine in order to get into a club? Would you take it? Would you take the vaccine at all? I've seen on Facebook many people said no way. However, this is how I see it going is that eventually, and it sounds quite kind of serious, but I think there'll be situations where you won't be admitted into certain places without the vaccine. That's just my opinion. But on Sunday, we're going to talk a lot about that. So the vaccine, the salsa, and how the sax is affecting us and a mental state of mind. How are we doing? I do feel we need to talk about this. So this is happening at two o'clock on Sunday uh, on my show. And I've got some amazing guests, all from kind of salsa, kazumba, uh, bachata backgrounds. I just think it's gonna be amazing. You're gonna see more um, kind of posts on it as well, but it'd be really nice for you to join us. You could just text your questions in if you don't wanna call in, but I just think it'd be a great debate for some great people. Boom, I'm done, I'm finished. Guys, thank you so much for uh, taking the time out to listen to me. Um, it is a serious thing out there and I am fully aware of that. But I wanted to start now thinking about taking action. You cannot just sit by as you have been in this car. And it's not all of you, but some of you have been and you know who you are, not doing anything. I think it has to change, all right? Because for things to change, you must change, okay? Guys, thank you so much, it's been amazing. I hope you have a amazing, amazing weekend, etc., etc. Big shout out for a few people that's put message up there. Really appreciate you um, listening in. Guys, as I always finish off, guys, it's not about getting through all of this situation. It's about getting from it. Guys, take care of yourself. Have a great weekend. Thanks so much.